Welcome to KK Hindi Startup University. In this class, we are going to discuss company form of organization, which is included in the fifth unit of paper business organization and business ethics of become first semester. The whole discussion will be divided into three parts. In the first part, we will discuss meaning and features of company form of organization. In the second part, we will discuss merits and demerits of company form of organization. And in the last part, we will discuss different types of company. So, what do we mean by a company? A company is an association of person created by law to carry on the expressly laid down objectives. It is established by law and can be dissolved by law only. Company has a separate legal existence from its members so that even if its members die, the company remains in existence. So, a company is an organization which is created by a group of person to carry on the expressly laid down objective. It has separate legal entity and it is established by law. The capital of the company is divided into small units called shares. Since members invest their money by purchasing the shares of the company, they are known as shareholders and the capital of the company is known as share capital. And in India, the Zain Stock Company are governed by the provisions of Companies Act 2013. Earlier it was Companies Act 1956. The Act has been repealed and now it is Companies Act 2013. Now the definition. There is no concrete definition of company. According to section 2, subsection 20 of the Companies Act 2013, a company means a company incorporated under this Act or under any previous company law. So any organization which is incorporated under the Companies Act are known as company. Now, the company form of organization has various features. Some of those features we are going to discuss here. So, number one feature and very important feature is company is an artificial person. A joint company or a company is an artificial person created by law and does not possess any physical attributes of a natural person. It cannot eat, it cannot walk, it cannot smile, it cannot marry, it cannot read or it cannot write. But it acts as an artificial person. It has a legal status like a natural person. It purchases, sales and make agreements like a person in its own name. It can sue other and it is sued by other in its name. The second important feature is created by law. So a company can be created by law only. It is a company is formed, carried on and even owned up by observing legal formalities. The companies has to be registered with the register of companies of the state with various documents like memorandum of association, article of association and prospectus. Uh, only after that a company can start its business. So um, the legal recognition is very important uh, before starting its activity. So the next important feature is separate legal entity. So being an artificial person, a company has separate legal entity from its owners, that is members. It can make contract, purchase and sell goods, employ people, conduct any lawful business, enter into any contract in its own name. It can sue and can be sued in the court of law. A shareholder cannot be held responsible for the act of the company. If the company acts illegally or the if company violates any rule, for that the owner, that is the shareholder, cannot be made liable. So for that only the company is liable. The next important feature is formation. So as we already discussed that for incorporation of a company, uh, it needs to undergo through a legal process. So it obviously takes uh, lots of time and lots of effort. So uh, the promoters of the company need to take help of some professionals and it requires again some time. So, Formation of a joint stock company is a time-consuming task and it 
involves preparation of several documents and compliances of several legal requirements before it starts its business. A company comes into existence only when it is registered under the Indian Companies Act. The next important feature is limited liability. So, the most important feature of the joint stock company is the liability of its shareholders is limited to the face value of the shares allotted to them. For example, if a person purchases 10 shares of rupees 10 each, so the liability of that shareholder is only 100 rupees, that is 10 into 10, 10 share of rupees 10 each. So uh, the liability of that shareholders who holds 10 shares is only rupees 100. Even if the company fails to pay, even if the company owned up, even if the company incur loss or whatever it may be. So the liability of a particular shareholder is limited to the value of his or her shares only. So this is very important feature which make the company form of organization different from all other kinds of organization, business organization. Another important feature of company form of organization is perpetual succession or permanent life. A company has a continuous life. The date, the withdrawal or insolvency of any member, that is any shareholder, will not cause discontinuation or closure of a company. It will continue even if its shareholders die, its shareholders become incapable, shareholders, any one of its shareholders become bankrupt, even then also the company will continue. Company has a distinct legal identity and management. So there is a divorce between the ownership and the management of the company. The company is owned by shareholders and managed by the board of directors. And the next features of company form of organization is democratic management. So a company is managed in a democratic way. A company is established by shareholders and they elect the board of directors. The day-to-day -day functioning of the company is looked after and managed by the board of directors who are again responsible to the shareholders, that is, actual owner of the company. The day-to-day -day affairs of the company is managed by the board of directors who are responsible to the shareholders, that is, the actual owner of the company. The last features we are going to discuss here is common seal. So being an artificial person, company enters into contract with different parties. But since a company is an artificial person, it cannot sign of its own. So it's use the seal of the company. Therefore, every company is required to have its own seal which act as official signature of the company. Any document which does not carry the common seal of the company is not a binding of the company. That is, if the contract or if the paper do not carry the seal of the organization for such documents the company will be not liable so this is very important being the mostly followed and largest form of business organization company form of business organization has many merits and demerits in this part we are going to discuss some merits and demerits of company form of organization so firstly, we are going to discuss the merits of a company or a joint stock company. So number one is the permanent existence. So as we discuss in the features, a company has a permanent life. A company never ceases to exist or a company never dies if any one of its shareholder or shareholders become insolvent or die or become incapable. So a company will continue to run or continue to work, continue to function even if its owners, that is the shareholders, become incapable or become lunatic or become insolvent or he or she dies. So this is one of the very important merit of a of company form of organization. 
the next merit is limited liability so the liability of the member the liability of the shareholders of a company is always limited to the value of the shares held by the shareholder so for example a, a shareholders hold 100 shares of rupees 10 inch so he holds shares of rupees 1000 so the liability of that shareholder is limited only up to 100 rupees even if the company become insolvent or company die then also that particular shareholder liability is rupees 100, 100 only the company can make him liable only up to 100 rupees so that is very advantageous for the shareholders so his no other assets will be liable for the debt of the company or the for the liability of the company the next important advantage is transferability of shares so the shares of a public company are easily transferable whenever the shareholder want his money back he can sell his shares in the market and he can realize cash so shares of the companies are very liquid the shareholder can convert it into cash as and when he feels necessary so the next is professional management so a company can afford to pay higher salaries to the professionals and specialists so they can hire experienced person and engaged in their management so the management is always in the hands of professionals so this is another advantage of joint stock company the next is diffused risks so since the capital of the company is divided into many small parts called shares and those shares are holds by numbers of people numbers of shareholders so the, all the shareholders share that risk and it become nominal so this is not the case in sole proprietorship and partnership where the loss has to be borne by the individual proprietor and limited numbers of partners of the firm individually or collectively so this is another merits of company form of organization the next is expansion potentiality so as there is a no limit of the maximum number of shareholders in a public limited company expansion of business is easy by issuing new shares and debentures so company as and when company feel and as and when the company become capable of expanding its business a company can go for expanding its business by raising additional capital since there is no restriction on that now the demerits so though the company form of organization have many merits it suffers from uh, some demerits also so number one is complexity in formation so as we already discussed in uh, features of company form of organization that to incorporate a company form of organization one need to fulfill various legal formalities and go through a uh, lengthy process of fulfilling various requirements so that is very time consuming and tedious so that be, that makes the formation process very complex so this is one disadvantage the next is lack of secrecy so what happened since company is incorporate under provision of law various law requires disclosure of various information so a company cannot hide any information it's um, a company always need to disclose uh, different information under different provisions of different law so there is no secrecy so company has to make most of its information public so that is one uh, difficulty so it's very difficult to maintain secrecy in case of a company form of organization then numerous legislation or numerous regulations though in india companies are regulated under companies act 2013 but there are many other laws related to environment related to pollution related to many aspects so all those 
legal provisions must be fulfilled by a company so this again make it difficult to run a company then delay in decision making so as we discussed the a company is always managed in a democratic way so since there is a democratic way the decision or the idea need to pass through various phases or need to pass through various hands so that makes the decision making process delay it has to decision is initiated or if an idea is initiated by the uh, top level of management then it needs to go to the middle level again need to go to the lower level so that makes the process very lengthy the next is impersonal work environment so separation of ownership and management leads to situation in which there is lack of effort as well as personal involvement on the part of the officers of the company since there is a separation between the ownership and the management the company is not run by the owners directly it is run by somebody who is appointed by the owners to manage the company in the next part we are going to discuss different types of companies so companies can be divided into different types based on different parameters so based on incorporation company may be of different kind so first one is statutory company so when a company is formed under the provision of a law passed by the parliament or by the state legislature such companies are known as statutory companies for example uh, we can say the life insurance corporation of india so these companies are governed by or these companies are established by a separate legislation passed by the indian parliament so this type of companies are known as statutory company so even if a statutory company is incorporated under a separate law but the provisions of indian companies act and other acts operating in the country are applicable to these companies next one is registered companies so any company which is registered under the provisions of companies act 2013 are known as registered company so in simple any company which is registered under the provision of indian companies act are registered company that is all companies operating in india are registered company now on the basis of liability company can be of different types number 1 company limited by share sometimes shareholders of some companies might not pay the entire value of their shares in one go in this companies the liability of members is limited to the extent of the amount not paid by them on their shares this means that in case of winding up members will be liable only until they pay the remaining amount of this of their shares so this is what we already discuss when the liability of the shareholders is limited to his shares only if liability of a shareholders is limited to the value of shares he or she holds then that type of companies are known as company limited by shares next is company limited by guarantee in some companies the memorandum of association mention amounts of money that some members guarantee to pay in case of winding up they will be liable to pay only the amount so guaranteed the company or its creditors cannot compel them to pay any more money that is what if a shareholder give guarantee to the company that in case of default or in case of winding up of the company i i will pay only x only to the extent of this amount suppose i i am liable a shareholder guarantee that i will pay maximum 10000 rupees in case the company wind up so in that case the liability of that particular shareholder is limited to rupees 10000 only so such companies are known as companies limited by guarantee then unlimited company so as the name suggest in this type of company the liability of the shareholders the owners is unlimited and his personal asset 
or his personal things may may be used for paying the liability of the company so that is why it is called unlimited companies where the liability of the shareholders is unlimited so again on the basis of numbers of members company can be of different types number one is one person company so this is a new type of company uh, which is incorporated only uh, in the companies act 2013 earlier this type of company was not there so one man company or one person company is separate from the sole proprietorship because one person companies are legal entities distinct from their sole members so again in case of one person company also the ownership and the business is separate unlike the other companies one person company do not need to have any minimum share capital and there is another unique features of one person company is that the sole member of the company has to nominate a nominee while registering the company so next is private companies private companies are those whose article of association restrict free transferability of shares in terms of members private companies need to have minimum two members and maximum 200 these members include present and former employees who also holds shares of that company so a private company is a company which restrict free transferability of shares that is one member cannot transfer his or her share to another members and again in case of number of members there must be at least two members to start a private company and that cannot exceed 200 the next is public company so a public company is a company which allow their members to freely transfer their shares that is the shareholders can sell their shares to anybody at any point of time so this is the primary characteristics of a public limited company and the in case of minimum and maximum number a public company must have minimum seven members and there is no uh, limit for of maximum number of member so a public limited company have can have n numbers of members on the basis of control or holding there may be holding company subsidiary company or associate company so what is a holding company in some case a substantial portion of a company's shares are held by another company so in that case the company owning these shares become the holding company or parent company that is the company which holds maximum shares of a company of another company that company is known as holding company or parent company and the company whose shares are acquired or whose shares are hold that company is known as subsidiary company of that parent company so this is all about holding and subsidiary company and there is another type of company called associate company in associate companies what happen companies have significant influence this significant influence amount to ownership of at least 20 percent shares of the associate company so when a company has acquired more than 20 percent shares of another company then that company become associate company so there are some other classification of company like government companies so what is a government company a government company is a company where the government holds more than 50 percent share capital so in that case we call it a government company the shares may be held by central government or a state government or by central and state government or by uh, two or more state government so uh, that may be um, there may be different patterns of holding but if the shares if more than 50 percent shares of a company is held by any government then it is called a government company then foreign company so any company which is which are incorporated outside india but they are doing business in india such companies are known as foreign company then 
there is charitable companies or we call it section 8 companies this is also new type of company incorporated under um, companies act 2013 so uh, there are some companies which are established for charitable purpose or their objective is to carry out some charitable uh, activity these companies are called section 8 company because they are registered under section 8 of the companies act uh, generally these charitable companies are associated with a uh, promotion of art culture uh, film um, uh, then trade sports commerce etc since they do not earn profit or their objective is not to earn profit they don't pay dividend to the shareholders thank you this is all about company form of organizations this is not all this is a part where we discuss about company form of organization uh, you can further consult our slms or other books for uh, in depth knowledge thank you